Today, I'm gonna to show you how I connected my three-year-old lock into my smart home system. And let's go. A few years ago, I got this motorized lock and it's been great so far. You can use a numerical code or my preferred method, the remote control. However, now that I've been doing more home automation, I want to figure out a way to connect the lock into the rest of my system. But first, I need to upgrade the batteries. This is not technically needed to make it smarter, but while I like the lock, I hate the fact that I won't take rechargeable batteries because they run at a slightly lower voltage. And the battery slot is so tight that I sometimes need a tool to get them out. To replace them, I get a bunch of 18650s that I salvaged from an old unicycle. Luckily, the voltages are close enough that the lock will warn me about low battery before the batteries go dangerously under charge. Great, now I just need to attach the wires to each end of the battery slot, and that should do it. I don't want to do anything permanent though, so I'll just wrap the cable around the contact for now. On the positive side, there's no easy way to attach a cable. So I grabbed a semi-dead battery and put a little metal at the end that I'll use as a contact, and then I can attach my wire there. I isolated the battery just in case, but it shouldn't matter. There's no more batteries there and it's not touching anything, so. Okay, now off to the good stuff. I'll go into the logic of my home automation system on a different video, but for now, all this device needs to do is receive a command from the main server and translate that to the lock so it actually executes it. To interact with the lock itself, I first thought of capturing the remote signal and maybe simulating it, but replicating wireless signals, uh, that's a deep rabbit hole. Then I thought, wait a minute, I already have a remote, so I can get a second one and dedicate it to this. Now I just have to figure out a way to push the buttons. And there could be a way with like a robotic finger or something like that, that would be that would be cool actually, but I figure it'd be easier to just bypass the buttons altogether. Buttons are basically valves, and when you press them, they allow current to go from here to here. And that signals the remote to do whatever that button is supposed to do. If I put a cable bridging those two, the remote thinks I press the button. So if I do that from a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi, I can effectively control the remote via Wi-Fi. I chose this microcontroller because it's cheap and it's supposed to work with the Arduino and it has Wi-Fi, so it seems perfect. And this is a part that will probably receive a bunch of comments. And actually, please do, because here's what happened. I originally thought about using transistors as a switch, but I didn't want to combine the voltages of my circuit with the remotes, and even after some vigorous Googling, I couldn't find if they're isolated. And I didn't want to risk burning any of them, especially since the spare remote took two weeks to be shipped. So to be safe, I used my good old friends, the relays, which are basically a button or a switch controlled by electricity, which are probably overkill for this, but I had a bunch of them and I like to hear them click when I send a command. All right, so let's put it all together.
After all that, I tried to install the drivers for the microcontroller, which was not well documented, so it took me a while. And after that, uh, still no luck. It seemed like it was supposed to work. The driver said it was working and the light was on, but I couldn't transfer any code to it. After an hour of this, I gave up and changed strategies, so I had a Raspberry Pi Zero W that I got for another project, and for now, that will have to do. And <laughs> if the relays were slightly overkill, using a Raspberry Pi for this is <laughs> whatever the next level is. Actually, a dedicated microcontroller is better anyway, because the Pi is like a small computer and it has to boot up, but it will do for now. First, I created the methods to lock and unlock, which is basically just activating and deactivating the respective relays with some pause in the middle. And at that point, I was able to do this. But I want the rest of my system to communicate with it. And for that, I'm using TCP sockets. Since the Raspberry Pi uses Python, I grabbed their example code for TCP servers from the Python documentation and just add a couple of things. Now I just need to connect both pieces of code together and... And it works! I did add a layer of encryption to it so I can't just send lock and unlock anymore. And even though it's in my local Wi-Fi, I didn't want anybody to be able to send lock and unlock to my door. But now that I integrate it into the rest of this thing, the house thingy, uh, I can do this. This is the clock that I did. Uh, I'll show you guys in a different video, but for now... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna add the magnetic sensor to it, so it knows when the door is open, so it doesn't try to lock and unlock then or like when I'm leaving, if I push the button to turn all the lights off, it waits and when the door closes, it automatically locks behind me, uh, that kind of thing. But because I'm gonna replace the Raspberry Pi anyway with an Arduino, I, it doesn't make sense to do it now because I gotta do the 3D printed case and the whole shebang. So I'm gonna do that later. Uh, but I did add this uh, 3D printed case to the batteries. So that looks nicer. If you liked the video, subscribe, do the bell thingy, do whatever you want, it's your life. So I hope you enjoyed that though, and I'll see you in the next video.